In 1939, the year when Emil Constantinescu was born, if someone would have crossed the Euro-Asian continent from the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean, from Tokyo to Lisbon, would have passed only through states under dictatorships. The place of his birth on the shores of Nista River, a border between the Soviet Union and Romania, would become the starting point of military invasions towards the east and later towards the west. Firstly, as a result of an agreement between the communist dictatorship and the fascist one, Ribbentrop-Polotov Pact, and secondly, in a reverse of the war between Hitler's Germany and Stalin's Russia. World War II caused the death of over 25 million military people and over 73 million civilians, huge economic losses and the destruction of the world cultural heritage. The end of the military confrontations in 1945 did not bring a real peace, but a cold war marked by the expansion of the communist dictatorship into Central and Southeastern European area, more human life losses, which only for Soviet Union are estimated to over 20 million people killed for political reasons by orders of their own leaders. Several million lives, mutilated by deprivation of liberty and spiritual terror, should be added from Vladivostok to East Berlin. As a child, Emil Constantinescu went twice through the refugees' drama and, during his teenage and adulthood, lived under a totalitarian and repressive regime. It led him to understand that peace is the most important treasure of humanity and that it is related to democracy and the respect of human rights. After 1989, when huge popular movements in Eastern Europe led to the fall of communist dictatorships, Emil Constantinescu was elected by professors and students alike president of the University of Bucharest and became the leader of the civic movements, dedicated his life to building peace in his country and in Eastern Europe through a project based on reconciliation and harmonization of relationships between Eastern countries after centuries of violent national and ethnic confrontations. Inter-ethnic conflicts in Central and Eastern Europe, frozen during communist dictatorships, broke out firstly in Romania in March 15, 1990, in Târgumoresh. In a monstrous attempt to return to power, agents of the former communist political police tried to start a civil war, announcing what was to happen later in former Yugoslavia. Romanian and Mogiar ethnic groups turned against each other, clashed in violent conflicts in the city central square, and only democratic intellectuals' reaction prevented a tragedy. Seven years later, in the same square in Turgumoresh, Emil Constantinescu, now president of Romania, and Arpad Gönz, president of Hungary, were acclaimed by both Romanians and Mogiars. Over years, President Gönz would confess that it was one of the most touching moments in his life because from so many hands he had shaken, he couldn't make the difference between Mogyar and Romanian hands. There were hands of people just being happy they had found peace. The historical Romanian-Hungarian reconciliation after centuries of bloody conflicts was possible only when the two countries ended up to be led by two statesmen who were sharing the same cultural and moral values, Emil Constantinescu and Arpad Gönz. They first met in Budapest in 1994, when Emil Constantinescu, a member of the board of the European Universities Association, was participating in the Conference of the European Presidents of Universities. The Romanian university scholar put forward to Gönz a cultural reconciliation, starting with assuming the errors of the past and continuing with building a common European future with the foundation of the civil society. President Arpad Gönz, sentenced in 1956 by the communist regime to life in prison, later elected president of the Writers' Union in Hungary, embraced this idea. The two remained friends beyond their two presidential terms. At NATO summits organized under the Aegis Partnership for Peace between NATO member countries and countries in Southeastern Europe and Central Asia, held in Madrid in 1997 and in Washington in 1999, the President of the United States of America, Bill Clinton, would declare that Romania is a model for other countries and the Romanian-Hungarian historical reconciliation a source of inspiration for the entire world. Elected President of Romania in 1996 with the support of the University Solidarity, the Students' League, the Civil Alliance 
and the Association of Former Political Prisoners, Emil Constantinescu got involved even from the very first day in office in the reconstruction of peace in the region. At the OSCE summit in Lisbon on December 2, 1996, Emil Constantinescu promised to make Romania a stability pillar for Central and Southeastern Europe. In less than one year, the Romanian president succeeded to make the historical reconciliation with Hungary to sign a state treaty with the Ukraine and initiate trilateral agreements. Poland, Romania, the Ukraine, Romania, the Ukraine, Moldova, Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, Romania, Bulgaria, Greece, forums of consultation and cooperation between chiefs of states, known on the other side of the ocean as Constantinescu's Triangles. During the summit for Balkans reconstruction held in July 1999 in Sarajevo, assigned rapporteur on monitoring the progress of democracy and human rights in the Balkans, Emil Constantinescu insisted on the necessity to adopt a shared vision on solidarity, responsibility and regional emancipation. Shortly afterwards, in September 1999, a diplomatic mission led by Romania had as target solving the Kosovo refugees issue. Then, in February 2000, the Palace of the Parliament in Bucharest hosted the Southeast European Cooperation Process when the Charter on Good Neighbourhood Relations, Stability, Security and Cooperation in Southeastern Europe was signed. When all the television networks in the world covered live the popular movement in Yugoslavia which ousted the last European dictator, Slobodan Milosevic, Emil Constantinescu was in the Vatican on a state visit. Following the events in Belgrade, together with President of Italy, Constantinescu made phone calls to all chief of states in the Balkans and proposed them a meeting which took place on October 25th, 2000 in Skopje, Macedonia to continue the cooperation process in southeastern Europe. Preserving peace in the Balkans remained a main concern for Emil Constantinescu even after the end of his presidential term. He joined the initiative launched by former president of Bulgaria, Zelio Zelev, of creating the Balkan Political Club as founder and permanent member in the board of directors. The Balkan Political Club succeeded to bring at the same table leaders involved in serious political conflicts in the past from Albania, Serbia, Macedonia and Bosnia-Herzegovina. During his presidential term, Emir Konstantinescu joined the presidents of Georgia, Turkey, Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan in launching the project of reconstruction of the Silk Road, which connected China and Central Asia to Central and Western Europe through cultural, cooperation and trade. Emir Konstantinescu belongs to the political family of chief of states coming from the intellectual elites, together with Václav Havel, Zelio Zelev, Arpad Gönz, Vitautas Landsbergis, Arnold Rutel, and the distinguished intellectuals around Lech Wałęsa, Tadeusz Mazowiecki, Bronislav Geremek, Adam Michnik and Irzy Buzek. The involvement of these writers, scholars, philosophers, musicians, who became statesmen in the project of the United Europe, assured that the expansion of the European Union will go further than just an enlargement of the economic and political area towards the East, and to represent a historical process of integrating old Eastern Europe civilizations in a common cultural space. The respect for racial, ethnic, cultural and religious identities, the right to be different, understanding the other's motivations, ecumenism and multiculturalism are values Emil Constantinescu has served all along his life. Elected in the board of several international organizations like World Justice Project, Habitat for Humanity, World Academy of Art and Science, Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, he could act for promoting these values globally. Launching the Levant Institute for Global Peace by the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy in the World Academy of Art and Sciences opens a process which, when we learn from the history's tragedies, assures that the people of the 21st century can build a safer and better world for us all. Emil Constantinescu's activity in serving peace, democracy and respect of human rights as a statesman, scientist and a man of culture was rewarded through several honours, awarded by prestigious international institutions meant to acknowledge his political and academic achievements in the field of global cooperation. In 1997, he received in Paris the Aristide Calvani Award for Peace, Democracy and Human Development. One year later, in 1998, in New York, 
the East-West Institute proclaimed him the European Statesman of the Year, following in the footsteps of Helmut Kohl, Václav Havel, Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan. Also in 1998, Count Danhoven Kalergy in Vienna offers him the European Prize in recognition of his role as a contributor to the European construction and stability in Central and Eastern Europe. In 1999, he was awarded in Atlanta the prize of the American Bar Association for exceptional merits in promoting the rule of law. In 2011, he receives in Madrid the Ambras Volar Prize for the education of professional and moral elites. In November 2013, in Manila, Emil Constantinescu received the most important award on the Asian continent, Gusi Peace Prize. A few weeks ago, on December the 1st, 2013, on the occasion of Romania's National Day, Emil Constantinescu received an homage with symbolic meaning. The prize, Artisan of Peace for Eternity, Heroes Do Not Have Nationality, handed out on behalf of the National Association of War Veterans in Romania by a 90 years veteran, twice wounded in the World War II battlefields. A peace message coming from those marked by the wounds of war and political terror, which Emil Constantinescu forwards to the young people of today's world, is meant to ensure that the tragedies of war will never happen again. <laughs>